Welcome to the Nintendo K channel, this is Evelyn. If this is your first time playing Splatoon 3, but not sure what direction to take, hear me out on this episode, as I walk you through a couple points and tips you should keep in mind of. It will get you up to speed and equipped for a fun time. When you first start the game, you will go through the basic of Splatoon 3. I know this sounds boring and it's a tutorial, but it is a quick and teaches you the fundamentals of movement and camera control. You'll learn how to aim and using your weapon by hitting targets. Simply put, you'll learn just by playing it. But keep in mind of your experience here because you're going to need it in the next part. This transitions to my first tip, play the story mode. Splatoon 3 is known for its online multiplayer, but yes, I recommend you play story mode. After going through the tutorial, this is where you can piece together what you learned in the start and put into practice with obstacles and enemies. The story mode is great at easing it on difficulty, so you get to build on what you learn and master. You will be surprised on how well the story mode is in learning all the fundamentals of Splatoon and having fun at it as well. Besides all this, playing the story mode gets you immersed into this world. You learn about the lore of Splatoon 3 and connect with these awesome characters. Taking it to the next step, play Turf War. Like I always say, ink ink ink. The idea is simple. The team with the most ground cover in their team's in color wins. Essentially what you learn in story mode, you take them moving on to Turf War. Different here is against real players on the field. In this online mode, as you play you learn how to think on your feet, quickly make decisions and implementing all you have learned so far with greater precision and accuracy. Of course, it does not come right away, but with practicing turf work, you will just get better at it naturally and come up with your own style of play and strategy. Just a thought, in case you don't know, I did say ink ink ink, but inking walls does not count to turf coverage. Now on to choosing your main weapon. I usually recommend weapons like the Splattershot Jr. and Aerospray. They provide good white ink coverage so you can cover a lot of turf and doesn't require pinpoint accuracy to splat others. Of course, when you get more comfortable, you can try out other weapons when you get them through shell them. Experimentation is key to finding your preferred weapon. But try not to get totally comfortable with one and disregard everything else. Every weapon does have their pros and cons. Just a thought, the Splattershot Jr. and Aerospray I mentioned early have good in coverage, but takes a lot more hits to splat an enemy, making yourself less equipped to counter. Up next, using your sub and special weapons. I have noticed the beginners that play Splatoon do not use their sub and special weapons, and it is totally ignored. My thought is you should use every tool available in your arsenal, because it is a huge benefit when you are playing. For example, I use bomb sub weapons quite often. It keeps the opponent on their toes as I go for a splat or use it to distract them as I retreat to safety. In regards to special weapons, I did put out some guides on how to use special weapons, and I will leave them in the description. They are a bit more in depth, so hope you check them out. But definitely try using sub and special weapons in your strategy. You'll notice it can change the gameplay dramatically. Last tip I can provide is to use motion control. It is just a lot more accurate to aim with. Using the alternate way with analog stick control with motion controls off will work, but the chance of overshooting your movement and making changes take a lot more time and effort. By the time you are readjusting your crosshair for an overshoot, more likely means you get splatted before you have the chance. Everything mentioned does take practice and experimentation. Everyone is different and there is no right or wrong but what you are most comfortable with is important. But keep an open mind to experimentation. It can go a long way in immersing yourself into Splatoon 3. If you find this guy helpful, I will appreciate you splatting the like button. Consider subscribing to Nintendo Key for more episodes coming your way. I am Evelyn and I shall catch you on the next one.